tinks you're making can be very intimidating for a beginning herbalist, but it doesn't have to be. Let me show you how. Hey folks, I'm Lucy from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine, and today I'm going to walk you through how to make a tincture using the ratio method. First of all, let's talk about why we would make a tincture. There are a lot of different ways to take herbs. You could do powders, capsules, glycerins, teas, just to name a few. However, there are several advantages to tinctures over other delivery methods. One of the main advantages is the shelf life. While dried herbs only have a shelf life of one to two years, tinctures have a really long shelf life. I have tinctures in my cupboard that are five, six, even 10 years old, and they still work great. The alcohol in the tincture is fantastic at preserving the medicinal components for a really long time. So if you're looking for shelf stable, long-term storage for your herbs, tinctures are a really good option. Another advantage that tinctures offer is that they are really fast acting. So this makes them especially useful for crisis herbs. If you need an herb to start working right now, you may not want to wait for some water to boil so that you can steep the powdered herbs and make a tea. Or if you're taking a capsule, your body won't even see the herb until you've digested the gelatin. Tinctures, on the other hand, are immediate. Mouths are very vascular, and shortly after the tincture hits the mouth, it is absorbed and in the bloodstream. Tinctures are quite easy to make, and once they are done, you have them ready to go. You don't need to do anything else to them to have your herbs when you need them. There are several methods that people use when making tinctures. One is called the folk method, and the other is the ratio method. With the folk method, you take your dried herbs and cover them with alcohol. Then you would shake them up every day for a couple of weeks and keep them stored in a cool, dark place. Now, that works fine. However, I prefer the ratio method. And the reason for that is it provides consistency. I want to know that from batch to batch, I'm getting the same potency of tincture. Weighing out the ingredients with the ratio method provides the reassurance that I will have more consistency in my herbal products. Okay, so let's talk about what ingredients we will need for our tincture today. Here I have 80 proof vodka. Vodka is an excellent choice because it is colorless, an excellent preservative, and it's fairly cheap. You can use other, more expensive alcohols, but you don't need to. The herbs don't care if you're spending more money. They'll extract just the same. So you may as well save a few bucks. Now let's talk about alcohol proofs for a moment to clear up any confusion. The proof is twice the alcohol content. So if your bottle says 80 proof, that means it is 40% ethanol and the remaining 60% is water. 80 proof alcohol is going to work great for most tinctures. I don't typically go lower than that because you'll lose some of the preservative power of the alcohol with a lower proof. In some cases, you may want to go with a higher proof. For example, when tincturing oily herbs, such as pine pollen or resins like frankincense and myrrh, you'll want to go with a higher alcohol content to get a better extraction of the medicinal constituents. One important note, do not use rubbing alcohol to make tinctures. It is poison if ingested. The only kind of alcohol you ever want to use for tincturing is beverage alcohol. The next item you'll need is your herbs. I almost always use dried herbs. Now, there are a few rare cases where you may want to use fresh, fresh herbs, such as in the case of shepherd's purse. My mom is a midwife and she always makes her own shepherd's purse tinctures to take with her to births. And she always insists that it is fresh shepherd's purse going into the alcohol 
because it is a little stronger. You can get away with tincturing Shepherd's Purse Fresh because it has a pretty low water content. But for the most part, you're gonna to want to go with dried herbs. The reason for that is due to the water content in the plants. If you tincture an herb fresh, that water content in the plant is going to dilute the alcohol to a lower proof and you will have a chance of spoilage. So for most cases, use dried herbs. I love using powdered herbs to make my tinctures and there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, when you grind the herb to a powder, the volume of the plant in the jar is gonna be much lower than if you put the fluffy leaves in whole or cut and sift. So you'll be able to cover the herbs with less alcohol than it would take to cover you know, the whole herb in its cut and sift form. Also, when you grind the herb down to a powder, there's now increased surface area for the alcohol to extract the medicinal components from the herb. The downside to powdered herbs is the straining process once your tincture is finished. Straining the fluid out of cut and sift herbs is much easier than straining herbs that have been powdered. But for me, I like using powdered herbs. Blenders work really great to grind up most herbs. I have a Vitamix that does really well, but most high power blenders are going to work just fine. So we are going to need a handful of items for our tincture making project. First off, we have a jar with a lid. We have the vodka, a kitchen scale, the powdered herbs, a spoon, some tape, and a Sharpie. And I also have an amber bottle. The tincture I'm going to make today is going to be done using the ratio method. So what is the ratio method? Remember with the folk method, we just cover the herbs in vodka. For the ratio method, we're going to weigh the ingredients. For the tincture today, I'll be using the ratio of one part herbs to five parts vodka by weight. There are some cases when you'll want to do a different ratio. Lobelia, for example, is very potent and will give an upset stomach if you take too high of a dose. So for Lobelia, I always use a 1 to 10 ratio, 1 part herb to 10 parts vodka. But in most cases, the 1 to 5 ratio is great. So let's make this tincture. First of all, we're going to turn on our scale. Now, lots of scales uh, may do ounces and grams, uh, and it doesn't really matter which you use when you're making your tincture. And we want to make sure that the weight of the jar isn't included, because that'll throw off our math here. Um, we do that by tearing the scale. So there should be a button on your scale that says tear. Just press that with the jar on, and if, once it says zero, you're good to go. Okay, now we're going to add our dried herbs. I'm going to do 20 grams here of the dried powdered herb. Just a little more. There we go. Okay, and since we added 20 grams of powder, that means we need 100 grams of vodka. I'm going to tear the scale again so that it's set back to zero. and put 100 grams of vodka in. Oh, right on the dot. That's always fun when that happens. <laughs> if you're over or under just a hair, that's okay. Don't fuss about that too much but as close to one to five ratio as you can. So there you have it. Now you know how to make a tincture. Now one other important thing you're gonna wanna do is label your jar. And I always make sure to label the jar and not the lid because, you know, lids are notorious for running off with any old jar. And you don't wanna get confused about which herbs are in your jars, so. So there you go. 
You're going to want to store your tincture in a cool, dark place for several weeks. And you'll want to shake it up, oh, about once a day. After a couple of weeks, you can use a cloth to strain the herb out of the liquid, and you can put the finished product in its permanent container. Amber glass bottles are a really good long-term storage choice. You want to make sure that it's amber and not blue or green or some other color. The amber bottles have protection against the light that the other colors do not offer. You now know how to make a tincture using the ratio method. Drop a comment below and let me know what fantastic herbal tinctures you are making. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a lot. If you want to learn more about herbs, consider enrolling in the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. We would love to join you on your herbal education journey. I'm Lucy from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. Thanks for watching.